So something funny happened on the way to church. Um, and uh, it's only funny to me because the joke is on me. I wrote a sermon, spell checked it, sent it to the office to print, and never pressed send. So I have a few things to say <laughs> uh, about overextension, multitasking, and trying to do too much with too little. But let's attend the parable first. The parable is one of those great, great troubling tales from Jesus about how we ought to live. And he is clearly telling us that he's on his way out. It's an eschatological parable. We're on our own, and we better figure out what to do with what he's given us. And he's given some of us this and some of us that, and he is saying that how we use what we were given really matters. So, uh, some of us got two, some of us got eight, and in the modern age of interpreting this parable, each of us, even if we got 10 talents, have decided we ought to go out and get 20 more. Right? That's how we think, right? How could 10 talents be enough in New York City, where the rents are too damn high, and, and you better get more or you're gonna be left behind. So this parable may have made sense in one kind of economy long ago, but I'm not sure it makes that much sense today. I remember fondly a long time ago being on one of the many pastoral support teams for Dan and Phil Berrigan. Oh God, such a loss, such a man, such a ministry and they were up in Danbury Federal Prison, prison doing their time. And we went to visit, and of course, we always got so much more out of these visits than we ever gave to them. And Dan said, you know, I should have done so much more. And I took that to heart. So should I have done so much more. But I'm trying to figure out when more gets to be too much. Not for Dan. He made his own decisions, and God, what would he have done without him? But for us, because there is this way of encouraging each other that will come to us in our final hymn today, that great Protestant uh, hymn, Awake, awake, stretch every nerve. What if I only have 10 nerves I want to stretch? Could the rest of them be on sabbatical uh, for a while? So we're going to sing that hymn, but we're going to sing it somewhat ironically and lovingly. So I love the business model of Annie DeFranco. Some of you know that she has a phenomenal voice, a phenomenal following, but she has decided to suppress revenues. She doesn't do all the music she could do. She doesn't do everything. Instead, she has created a kind of corporation, a kind of music business that says, I'll do this much and then I won't do any more. Uh, she actually was interviewed in the Sun magazine, and if I had my notes, I could give it to you almost right, where somebody says, don't you think your business should be bigger? And she says, my thing is as big as it needs to be. You didn't get it. She was suggesting that there was something sexist to the operation of always getting bigger, always getting better, always making more than you have the capacity to make. I also love a Cuban theologian, Mujerista Ana Maria Isas Diaz, who writes constantly about a thing called lo cotidiano, which means the dailiness. And she says, not that we should use everything we've got and max it out and grow it, but instead, she says, we should live every day finding out what the enough is for that day. It's a beautiful way of thinking about life, and it subverts the paradigm of and the imperative of growth very, very beautifully. So let me talk a little bit about Judson Memorial Church and our business model, because I think it might be getting a little too big for itself. Michael Ellick always said that we play, we fight outside of our weight class, and he was right. 
We all are great fans of Daniel Berrigan, and we think we always could be doing more, couldn't we? But when does more become too much? And I'm going to ask Miles to simply read the titles from this week's Digital Fountain. Just the titles. Sunday. Sunday service, May 1st. Mystery School rolling in this Sunday. Judson Arts Wednesdays presents Unarmed. Pledge for 2016. Give Judson a lift, or rather, an elevator. Songs for a day in May. Judson New Members Pock. The Great Street Me. Anti-racism follow. When you roll, will Judson rock? Relationship of NYPD and ICE, who knew? Help pass Fair Day in Court for Kids Act. Immigrant Accompaniment Schedule. Mystery School Update. And this doesn't include the 13 things we had to say no to because we didn't have the space. So we got turned down uh, by a very significant foundation whose name will be kept because they had refocused their priorities to the arts and social change. Needless to say, that was really very disappointing because what we overdo is the arts and social change. And I suppose in the name of the parable, I'm wondering if we might underdo the arts and social change with more leverage and more joy. But to help explain this, I'm not going to answer the question about whether Judson's overextended or not. At our tables during Agape, I'm just going to ask you if there's one thing you would give up around here, what would it be? I hope it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> or Micah. Or Zach. <laughs> or Molly. Or Toby. But is there one thing we could give up? See, we have this sense of extravagant hospitality. We believe we're here to do great things. And we've got to make sure we're not doing too many great things. So I'm going to tell you the story of the Olives. We had a funeral here. Uh, and as many, many funerals that happen here, they're from people we don't know. They, they think that we can help them, and we try to. It costs us $1,300 to open the door. Sound, tech, lights, uh, security, cleanup, set up. And often people will say, well, how much do you charge for a funeral for a non-member? Uh, we do not charge for funerals for members. Uh, but we do charge for funerals for non-members. And often it's a really painful conversation because they'll say, you know, I just, I really don't have $1,300. And you'll say, okay, then what do you have? Uh, and maybe this particular funeral ended up giving us $600. Uh, and then the reception came. And the prosciutto, and the wines, and the cheeses, and the whole thing was so fancy that we really became quite cynical. Really quite cynical, and started making sick jokes. Like, what are we supposed to do with 40 pounds of expensive olives? So we packed them up and gave them away to the poor. People wondering why we were handing out olives <laughs> in Washington Square Park. When things get out of right use and right balance, it is very hard to rewrite the balance. 
And we exist to create artful and just forms of exchange. We exist to help people understand right use of themselves and of each other. And when we are used, instead of engaging in right use, it has a long trickle. You might know that yourself because many of you have been used in one way or another. We are in the second stage of a capital campaign. The first stage was mightily successful. It was our internal stage and all of you gave generously. So please do not misread this sermon that I'm asking you for more money right now, I'm not. We're in the capital campaign stage two for the community. And we sent out 100 letters uh, to very likely people, neighbors, and uh, made phone calls to them and sent them all kinds of wonderful information about us, and we got absolutely zero response. Causing those of us who were stuck with the olives to wonder if we were doing too much, if we weren't doing enough self-promotion, If we had failed each other and ourselves somehow in not doing right use. So, instead of becoming cynical, I think I'm going to try to become more scriptural and talk about what we might give up in order to be in greater balance. Because even great activists can overdo what we do. Even great artists can overdo the growth of what they do. I don't know how that works out in your life, but I have a feeling that many of you have kitchen tables with long to-do lists on them and stacks of bills next to the long to-do lists because somehow that has become a way of life for us. So what if we went to 10 talents? Because I do think we have 10 talents. I think we're crazy talented. But what if we had 10 talents and didn't need any more talents than that? What if we developed a capital campaign where we felt the burn and put up a big sign outside, we will not take any contribution over $27. wonder what would happen. But right now, we need to take a good strong look at our business model of overusing this space and overusing these people and overusing each other. And I don't know where it'll go, but you will and we will. One more story. There's a, a man very close to Metro Baptist Church, which is our sister church over in Chelsea, and I had lunch with their uh, pastor and with Susan Sparks this week. We had a ball talking about how overstressed we all were. It was a lot of fun, very comforting, all doing too much. On behalf of what, though? On behalf of what? And Scott told the story of his next-door neighbor, who is a, he says, has the best pizza in all of Chelsea. I don't know about that, but I'm sure it's very good. Anyway, the guy wanted to expand his business. And so Scott helped him go to the Port Authority. There was a little corner, like as big as this table, that the Port Authority owns. It's right next door to his pizza shop. And he thought, wow, I could make a lot more money if I had that little corner and I could sell pizza out there. And so they made a big deal of helping this guy. And uh, the Port Authority came back with a rental figure of $60,000 a month. And so we sat there the rest of the afternoon figuring out how many pizzas you'd have to (laughs) sell per month (laughs) to pay the rent on the $60,000 of space. And since we were all gonna preach on the parable of the talents this morning, we decided there was something to limiting the number of pizzas you sold because you could really get into a crazy spiral. All right, so the meaning of this text is to find right use of ourselves and of each other. 
right use. That doesn't mean you don't give, but it might mean you don't overgive. It doesn't mean you don't extend yourself with what you've got, but it does mean that there are limits on growth. Limits on growth. The text also says it really matters what you decide to do with your talents and what you've got. Because wrong use is hell and right use is heaven. Amen.